new toy, 946-1010 hot plate for PCB work. 1010 refers to the 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter platform. There is also a 2020, but I chose the smaller footprint as it reflects more my type of work. It's advertised as 400 watts, and that may be so in the 220 volt world, but here at 110 volt, I measured 2.8 amps, so it's more like 300 watts. You would think that would be plenty to raise the temperature quickly, but if you notice here, it looks roughly like about a 10% duty cycle. So it takes a little while to climb. That's not the biggest concern with this. It was also going to take a little while to cool down. So I went ahead with the purchase with the worst case scenario being that this would be useful to bring the PCB to a base temperature, let's say 170 degrees Celsius, and that it would require very little heat from the hot air nozzle directed at individual components from there. But today's video will be focused on whether this thing is capable of bringing a PCB project to completion. I want to allow the board to be brought to reflow temperature. I'll shut it off. I will let it cool without removing the board from there and then test the circuit to see if it was successful. Our test board is a HS402 PCB version 2.0. There are no stencils. I'll be applying the solder paste with a syringe. I can afford to be more liberal with the larger pieces. Small dabs where the 805 resistors and capacitors are. You've probably noticed this in your work as well. So when we heat solder paste, before it flows into solder, it tends to spread as mud pies. And our hope is always that through surface tension, it will collect onto the pads properly. But with small parts like these op amps and these narrow pads, it doesn't always work out like that and we end up with bridging. So by pre-tinning them like this, I'm not adding any additional paste. I'm going to position the op amps on there and let them reflow. All right, nine minutes has elapsed and we're at 176 degrees and climbing. One hundred and eighty degrees. So the temperature rise is quite slow. It's my first full uh, flow here uh, with this hot plate uh, to completion. So uh, bear with me a bit. Uh, the camera's in the way a little bit also. I'm going to be jumping into action here uh, if anything needs a little nudge. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I want to rely on uh, surface tension. You probably can see that there's a bit of uh, smoke that rises here. 185 degrees, 10 and a half minutes have elapsed. I'm seeing the first signs of flowing. It's 190 degrees, 188 degrees. I will allow it to come up to 200.
So far, nothing needs my help. One hundred ninety three degrees. Twelve and a half minutes have elapsed. The slightest little nudge here on the 6S21. I'm surprised at these variable capacitors. They have found their place. They're usually uh, tricky with a hot air gun. 197 degrees. It looks like everything has reflowed here. I'm shutting the temperature off. 13 and a half minutes have elapsed. I'm making no effort to remove this board off the plate. I want to see what it does from start to finish right on there. For better or for worse. One of the things that would be useful with this is if it displayed the temperature as it's cooling down. Once you shut the switch off, the display also goes off. All right, 14 and a half minutes, and uh, I'll come back to you uh, later as this whole uh, hot plate and the PCB have cooled down. Surface tension brought everything in pretty good, except that one little 6S21 that I had to give a little nudge. That's all right. I was particularly impressed with the two variable capacitors here that are usually stubborn in locating. They found their position through surface tension real easy here. These two little suckers, the BAV99s, they are twin diodes. They're very light, and with hot air, they're usually very easy to blow around. Here, they just found their spot. If I have any concerns at this stage, it would be with the 6S21s. Uh, they might be just a little bit light on solder. I'll go add the headers, the BNCs, and this being an option one build, there's a one kilo ohm variable resistor to add here. Then we'll come back. Since being able to test whether or not this hot plate method of assembling the PCB was a success or not, requires us to trim this variable resistor to trim these variable capacitors to do a zero volt calibration within 8 scope and to do a 10 volt multiplier calibration. I thought I would do it all on camera and it would serve as a reference. We adjust this potentiometer here until we can get 1.65 volt from the board ground to the BNC ground. Requires many turns of the potentiometer to get there. Orientated this way, it's going to be clockwise. Orientated 180 degrees, it would be counterclockwise. And because it's a lot of turns, you're unscrewing it. And there's more risk of damaging this pot by unscrewing than there is by turning it inwards. So this is the preferred orientation of that pot. And for the purposes of that adjustment, I'm just providing 5 volts here to the USB from an ordinary wall phone charger. For the variable capacitor adjustment, I'm supplying a 1 kilohertz square wave to channel 1. I've got a 400 kilosample per second sample rate.
and I will try to fine tune this until I get the best square corners I can. Too much, a little bit down, a little bit down. Right there is good. Do the very same thing for channel two. Next come zero volt calibration, which has to be performed on both channels. So we go to the settings, calibration, calibration zero volt for channel one. Continue. And we're looking for low numbers like this on the zero calibration. It's an indication that the circuit is sound. Move the shunt over to channel two. Zero volt calibration for channel two. Continue. Again, very nice low numbers on that zero volt calibration, an indication of a good circuit. The second step to the calibration procedure is the calibration multiplier. Where we apply one of these known voltages. I'm going to choose 10 volt to channel one. It could have been from something fancy like this AD584 reference that I featured on the channel. But for the sake of this video, I'm supplying 10 volts, 0 0.0 from my power supply. Continue. If there was an error with this circuit, there would be a big warning sign here on that procedure. This is a good indication again that we have a good circuit. Move over to channel two. Calibration multiplier, again 10 volts, this time for channel two. Continue. We're good. No warning sign here. Exit that. Then it's a matter of checking each one of these input ranges on each channel to make sure that they read properly. So the hot plate did a really good job. When things don't work out, whether you use a hot plate or you do a hot air a rework station on these circuits, you end up having to go through this uh, schematic. There are troubleshooting measuring points throughout. Um, it's a lot more fun when you don't have to go there. That's it. Catch you guys later.